on here. Um, going to make sure that we got. He's going to have to turn his camera back on. Yeah, Ryan's going to have to turn the camera back on if it doesn't come to stage. There we go. Got it. Yeah, totally. I'm, get, I'm getting the hang of this here right yeah, quick. I'm getting so. the hang of it now. So. <laughs> Pretty soon, I, I just want to start running this roundtable here pretty soon there, uh, Damon and yeah. Ira and Andrew. So uh, I'm so technologically sound with this platform right now. Yeah. So I feel are confident. You from, are you from Canada? I am from Canada. Can you can you uh, hear the Canadian twang I in I my voice? I thought I heard Canadian bacon in your voice, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I, I just want to welcome everyone to the Exit Your Way Roundtable. We are actually trying this once again to go live on LinkedIn and our other channels while we're doing this, so have a little fun with it. Um, and uh, today I'm pretty excited because we're going to have Ryan Erickson here. He's going to talk about, you know, cold calling or whatever you want to call it, you know, using the phone in 2020, basically to, to drive relationships and business sales and, and what he sees. He's a phone, he's a phone uh, expert. That's what he does day in and day out. It'll be uh, very interesting to hear what he has to say there. Um, excited to see everyone here again. Lots of familiar faces, some new faces. Awesome. And, uh, we're going to start out again like we have been, which which uh, is Andrew's idea, and it's a lot of fun to bring everybody up on the stage and and ask a question. So, Andrew, what is our question for today? So, yeah, let's get to know each other a little better rather than just the the uh, standard thirty second introduction. About thirty seconds to answer. Hey, you know, without work, if you had a month, and you where would you go? And what would you do? And what was the other thing? Why? Why? And why? Why do you want to go there? Where would you go if you had a month? Yep. In hand. All right. Let's start pulling some folks up. All right. Yeah. We're gonna bring people to the stage. Yeah, this is great. See now. Let's see if he gets it there, Mister. There's Andrew. See, last, Andrew. Last time first. first. This time. I would first in like oh, that, that's called <laughs> that's called Philo. Yeah. Yeah. I would go there. <laughs> my bow. Andrew, I would go no more. Give you class. Are you getting what? Where I could get picked last. Yeah, <laughs> you could get picked last. There you go. Yeah, I morning, Andrew. Good morning. So Andrew, where would you go if you had if you could go anywhere for a month and, and money was no object? Where would you go and what would you do? I would go back down to my secret place in Costa Rica and disappear for a month and off gas. That's a good one. That's a good one. What would you do? Perfect. What would you I do? Would, I would work, done this I would probably work on one of one of my one of my hobbies off in the woods. Nice. Yeah. nice. And not talk to people and wander. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Awesome. Nothing wrong with that. No, that's great. Adam, where would you go? I would go to St. Andrews, Scotland and hang out playing golf all day long. <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> every day? What's that? Would you play golf every day yeah. for a month? Every single day. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and what would, you shoot? what would you shoot? What would your, what do you think your, your score would be? I generally shoot in the low 80s, so yeah, I would maybe. hope I would hope on the on the old course that I could break a hundred. That that whenever I yeah, play, I was gonna my, say it's gonna be harder because of the wind and no, there's nothing to stop the ball from rolling. It'll roll forever. Yeah, on all my bucket list courses, my goal is always a hundred. So there you go. so I I've shot you know I've played Pinehurst, I've played the Ocean Course at Kiowa, um, so I have a, a whole bunch of other courses, and uh, the old course at St Andrews is, is definitely on that list. Yeah, I just had a friend. Adam stole my answer. <laughs> yeah, I had a friend <laughs> at the beach last week. He said that was quite an interesting, interesting thing. So, so Corey, where would you go for a month? Hey, uh, you know, I'm not real sure, but I might, uh, <laughs> I might, uh, I might go visit uh, my house uh, in New Zealand and uh, play some and rugby. Just, uh, you know. Rugby's rugby's more fun to watch than cricket, but uh, yeah. 
you know, actually I like to spend a lot of time on the beach, just yeah. have a great time and, you know, travel. And it's, it's a really fun place to just travel around. It's kind of like uh, California only with only 3 million people. Yeah. <laughs> so, Very cool. Uh, so it's Very like, cool. The, it's like the city that I live in. Yeah. yeah. 3 million people. Yeah. Welcome to California. 3 million people. So Brad, where would you be going? Well, I had two thoughts. My first thought was if I if I could go anywhere and cost weren't an issue, I would go to the moon, literally, right? But <laughs> yeah. literally, uh, yeah. but you know what? What I am going to do with the first month I take off, right? Probably the year, year and a half out, um, I'm going to go to Italy. Oh, nice. Yeah, I have not been. I want to, you know, go stay in uh, Venice and paddle around. Go to roam and make a nuisance of myself. So yeah, awesome. that, that would be mine. Awesome. Nothing wrong with that. Very good, very good. Well, Dan, so where would you be going for a month? I'm simple. My uh, my mother-in-law has a house in Hilton Head, South Carolina, so I'd go there. So oh. there's, there's, there's plenty to do there. It's golf and oh, swimming. Great place. He lives great place. Uh, half a mile from the beach, so everything's right there. Yeah, yeah, that's a great, great thing. Great, great place, it's a great spot too. Woo. And I could golf every day down there easily. Yeah. 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 Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right, Jeff, you're up, Jeff, man. Jeff's going to go on a motorcycle. Oh, Oop. can't hear you. You're on me, buddy. Now, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I no, got it. All right. It's my headset. Um, I think uh, New Zealand as well, potentially, would be oh. one of my top picks. Um, just think it's a cool place and then uh, uh cliche uh there's a part of hawaii i really like and yeah. uh i could go and decompress and be you know pretty isolated on the kona coast there and so yeah those would be my 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 places i would go and you can do that on the way to new zealand yes through through, through hawaii it's true it's a little right bit of a puddle around. it's a puddle jump it's a long flight to new zealand for sure yeah uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's good that's good awesome yeah. well jennifer where would you go for a month oh it would be with or without the kid i was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> i would go to my room for a month and sleep if that's what i could do <laughs> right yeah uh, <laughs> I, was gonna, the I would I would leave the kids somewhere, go to a beach and, uh, you know, leave them with their dad or whatever, go to a beach and like lay on the beach and read a book because like, that's all I want to do is just go to the beach and read a book <laughs> uninterrupted. So that's my Very good. Introverts, introverts unite, read a book by ourselves. It's more read. relaxing. Yeah. Cause right now when I go to the beach now, I have to like, make sure one's not eating sand, make sure the other's not running away. And, right. Yeah. You know, yeah. Thing. It's the mom life. Mom. Yep. 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 So, yep. That's cool. That's cool. Well, uh, let's see. You're bringing Kelly up. Trying to get some. Kelly, do you gotta have to turn your camera on? Or were you just listening, Kelly? She's in her robe, yeah. probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on, Kelly. I know Kelly is working out. She's yeah, always she's on her camera. Good, <laughs> Look, she yes, is. Yes, 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 I, I know my audience. Brian's going to talk about know your audience and cold calling, and I I nailed her. Ooh. I was listening while I was doing some surfing. So here's what I would do: I am active treadmill the whole. <laughs> no, I am. I'm very active, and my head is always very active. So I would love to take a break because. I like to just literally, I love the beach, I love the water, I'd like do nothing. So I would go to the Four Seasons in Bora Bora. Ooh. There you go. That's a good one. That's a good I one. can afford it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. First yeah. 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 Yep. That's, that's beautiful. Beautiful. awesome. That's good. That's, right. that's Bora Bora be awesome. I never, I've never gone, and I think that that's one of those, like at Antigua, you know, some of those things are just so great. So, Mark, where would you be? So, I've got, you know, a couple answers here. The practical answer is I would go someplace, like even my cousin's Airbnb in Tennessee, or better yet, my in-law's uh, place in San Diego. They have a place on Coronado where oh, I could wow. stay. Now, it would probably be better if they weren't there, but, but yeah. uh, 
Um, and I would work on my novel, uh, which I have started and yet to finish. But if I had a month of time, you know, the optimistic part of me says I could finish it then. Now, if, if money were no object and I knew exactly where I was going, I'd probably go to the Mediterranean or New Zealand or someplace in the South Pacific and yeah. do the same thing. Yeah. Just got to do yeah. some research there. That's cool. That's cool. Awesome. Well, Mary, where would you go for that month? Uh, I kind of agree yeah. with Mark. I would, I would probably go and do some writing, but I would probably go to uh, back to Florence, spend a little yeah. time there, and then um, get a villa in Tuscany. And you go sip some good wine and some and, and have some good olive oil. So, wow, that that you guys in the in the Mediterranean. I, I'm thinking about that one. That's that's yeah, a good it, one. it's Those not hard to do. <laughs> no, 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 no. Awesome. It's not hard to do when money is no object. Yeah, it's yeah, hard, yeah, it's yeah. hard to do when you're <laughs> yeah. bill. Yeah, yeah. Well, Melissa, where would you be going for that month? Hey, good morning. So New Zealand and Australia have always been on my list. I've never taken more than I think 10 days off. So a month would feel like amazement and uh, just the combo of food and fun. So there's beach, there's hiking, there's biking to be outside and also eat all the things you want to try. So that would be my jam. Very good. Very good. <laughs> I, I always... So lamb and... What's that? <laughs> if you like lamb. Yeah. The... Um... There is a lot of the, the New Zealand culture and the Australian outback. I think those things are just, it, it, it have to be to see the dancers in New Zealand and, and to uh, experience the outback and that sheer nothingness, you know, that would be something. That would be something. Awesome. Mike, where would you be going for a month? I'd actually go visit Ira and then I would work my way up to you guys. There you go. <laughs> he doesn't want to be muted anymore. So you, uh, you know, you would, go, you would go by car. No, perhaps. You know how long it would take to get from Chicago? That would be that would be like a third, not a third, a tenth of the trip, though. It would take me three days. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, so, and then you got to go back. You know what I mean? So there's six of your time. There's six of your thirty days. There is there the car is some, some lure to driving in the car a long ways like that. Although. Yeah. I will it say depends that. how much pot I have. Yeah. And we well, could come here and buy it legally so we wouldn't have to worry about bringing yeah. it. Up. Yeah. But, yeah. Hey, I'm just being honest. Yeah. <laughs> you know? he, he probably would need three days to, to, to decompress after visiting me because I'm going to make yeah. him work the whole time. That's that's why I would drive up to Damon and Andrew because yeah. I know those guys, they're up there. You know, they're, they're they cool. You know, they, they take it easy. Yeah. 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 Well, that's hey, awesome. Oh, come on. Awesome. Well, you know, Pete, where would you be going? Well, a few people have said it already, and, and I got to <laughs> tap into that too. Um, number one on my bucket list is uh, New Zealand. And what I would do is I would bike and hike along uh, where uh, the Lord of the Rings was shot. So uh, that's that would be something. How yeah. can you not like that answer? I don't that, agree. that would really be something. And, you know, for people that don't know, Pete lives in one of the most absolutely beautiful places in the United States. You know, the Olympic uh peninsula and out where you live and and just what is it 60 miles from your place is is the hurricane ridge and some of those places. yeah um, i was gonna yeah. say it god it is so nice out there yeah um it's hikers but, paradise oh yeah it is it is because i see your pictures on facebook from where you're going and i'm like i feel bad because all i got to do is jump on a ferry for 20 minutes and i'm you know an hour away from that stuff and i never do it yeah yeah, you so, got it. Especially yeah. now when, when the traffic isn't so bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is the time of year when you get those sunny days out there. You get some wonderful hiking yeah. and biking and stuff. So awesome. Randy, where would you be going, my friend? I would, for two weeks, I would take my wife to Italy to go back. We've been there once and we want to go back to Tuscany and stay there. It's just absolutely beautiful. And and then uh, and so we'd hang out for a couple weeks there and then I'd come back and take two weeks and go over to you and take clothes and other things to Wanumi Lasuli's orphanage and spend some time doing some projects at, there and helping them. That so, would be awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah. Be awesome. That's my, good. Daughter wants, my daughter wants to be just south of there in Mozambique as a missionary. Yeah. That's where she wants to go. So I wouldn't mind doing that. A little bit too. Very cool. Very cool, Randy. Well, Ron, 
someone who has traveled extensively, where would you be going? Because you oh, know, all you overachievers out there, man. First of all, I would leave my phone. I would shoot it. Right. I no news <laughs> at all. And I would not do anything that would be considered productive. Right. And so we're talking about color the lines. Okay. I would have breakfast for dinner, you know, tropical island somewhere, right? So South Pacific, Bora Bora, Kelly, or the Caribbean, right? But uh, I'd pour beer on my cereal. I'd just not do anything that'd be considered productive. That's awesome. Come on. <laughs> what kind of cereal? I don't know. I would eat great food, though, uh, other than the yeah. beer on my cereal. But, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Seafood, whatever, man. I'm trying I to just, figure out what cereal get, would with beer on it. Nothing that would be considered productive. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> that's an awesome one. Awesome. All right. Well, Andrew, we have anyone else that's come up? I see we're trying to bring people on stage, but looks like we're oh troy hello can you hear me where would you be going troy we so got... i um i love you know everyone talking about new zealand and parts of europe but listen i would go and and take those 30 days and go visit the states here in the united states that i haven't seen and all the beautiful spots that we have in our own country so that's what i would do probably take those 30 days and go see these beautiful places that uh, you know we we take for granted because because they're, yeah. they're in our own backyard. Yeah, and even like you know, you make such a good point because I had uh, some friends that did. What's the one in Utah? The Arches and yep. Moab, and and there's so much stuff just on the Western U United States. But when you look at that and you think about all the 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 southeast and up through the appalachians and uh yeah it, you are that's really cool and, and yep. you forget about colorado and everything else and and where andrew lived i mean they're just our there yeah. are except i probably wouldn't go to west point new york because um i've been there a couple times already and it's where this really uh offensive university is that air force is playing this weekend so i wouldn't go there <laughs> awesome. who, who would blame you yeah. awesome troy so sue where would you be going for that month um i have a real wander loss so i definitely travel i'd love to go biking someplace and if the world was completely safe again i'd love to bike the great wall of china Ooh. oh that would be yeah that would be incredible that'd be awesome yeah that would really be incredible awesome right. uh, i i just i can cool. that, that's so cool that's so cool yeah. well alan uh -huh. so where would well, you be going if you could go anywhere for a month he's gonna go to a butter pecan ice cream factory <laughs> you know i i think in terms of feelings in terms of emotions so i would go where i can get serenity to be honest now, could be Thailand, somewhere on a beach that I've never been to Thailand, the Far East. Uh, could be, you know, somewhere in, I don't know, like you said, Utah or a nice cabin up somewhere that is isolated. But right now, during this period of time, and in my life, you know, everybody's personal, I'm looking for you know, serenity and knowing myself, it will take me three days just to calm down. <laughs> yeah. You really, so I'm looking for the feeling, not so much the location, but for me, it will be like a beach near a beach or, you know, nature, beautiful. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. Very cool. Not where you're Very going, it's where you are. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, exactly. and by the way, for the record, speaking of feelings and all, and excuse my French, but it's so fucking good to see you all. I missed you. Yep. Yeah. Welcome back. Good, man. Good, to, good see to see you, man. man. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. 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 All right. No. Well, I think, I think Andrew, I think we've we got, got one more. Or? Well, we've got John. Hey, so David, where would you go besides Edmonds? Well, we got to ask, we asked Ryan. We have to ask Ryan first. I'll go last. Ryan, yeah. The, uh, the bot. <laughs> 
the, the, the much the boss and the much much better half has laid the uh, groundwork that I'd be going to uh, Santorini um so that's where I would go with our uh, recently uh, born little girl so I think I think I'll just let her control where we go and uh, that's that's our destination take it from there all right all right well we've got that's awesome that's an awesome place and then we've got dr. Elia who raised his hand so we should get him up here because um, oh. I know I know he is uh, he is someone that can, <laughs> Can, definitely has an opinion about where he would be going. Yeah, but he. Does, I want to answer first before. All right, <laughs> he, he does. I, I'm going. <laughs> I'm going to Santorini with Andrew and his wife. <laughs> I, I'm going to answer first because my, my, and I've already done it. So I've traveled a lot. I've been to New Zealand. I've been to Australia uh, for a significant amount of time. I live in Park City, Utah. Another great spot to land. So, um, but I can see New Zealand's great, but uh, I've also been to Italy, the Amalfi Coast, but Greece, number one, went there when we were first married up in uh, an island, uh, Asos in the Northern Aegean. Uh, there's a town up there called Theologos, right in the top of it. It's about the houses there, the people that live there, it, it, those houses are about a thousand years old. <laughs> Stone things, uh, yeah. you know, make your own uzo, you know, grapes, a little uh, book ride down to the beach, uh, write a book. That's it. Yeah. I just need to get yeah. back there. Yeah. Uh, we're planning awesome. on it here. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Awesome picture. So, Dr. Elia, where would you be going? I'm sorry, I missed the first half of the quick going in, in terms of what? Because I just came on. Oh, it's, this is where, if you could go anywhere for a month, where would you go? Money's no object. Money's no object. Uh, I think Bora Bora. I think awesome. I would go in the in the South Pacific, honestly, because that's very exotic. You know, uh, I mean, to me, you know, Greece is beautiful, but you know, obviously, I'm from there. But the the South Pacific is beautiful, and uh, that's something that I would love to go to. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Wear a bathing suit all day long and do nothing, and just meditate on the beach and swim and snorkel. You know. Yeah. 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 That's good. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> All right. Well, then, Ira, where would you be going? Uh, I'm going to chill. So I'm going to have to do what Ron Craig said and blow up every no electronics for me, because that's the only way I won't work. Uh, I will take a stack of books. I'm going to Carmel is where I'm going. Carmel, California. Look, Carmel by the sea. There you There's go. a place of 17 mile drive where yeah. a couple beaches and all that stuff. Food, resort. Yeah. The ocean, it's uh, it's relatively secluded, so there's not a lot of people, which is, again, introvert's paradise. That's where I'd go. And the internet sucks there anyways, by the way. That's a, that's a cool spot. That's a cool spot. Yeah. Um, it's not a month there. And kids or no kids? I'd go with or my wife. Kids or no I'd kids? Leave, I'd leave the kids home. I'd take my wife, though. Awesome. Me, awesome. me and my wife in a month in Carmel, we'd probably come back with another kid. Just <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> good, good. Well, we'll. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm writing down some of the answers, and they're really good. And and I'm, I'm realizing that mine is simple. I think I'm the last one, right, Andrew? Andrew hasn't gone yet. I think so. Yeah, unless okay. John or Kevin. Yeah, I'll come up here, John Boehner. They have to turn, uh, have to turn on. He's got to turn his mic on. I think. Or, so yeah. I'll, I'll I'll go with mine. Mine is really simple. I've I've come to over the years to really enjoy Mexico and and Puerto Varda, and I'm not a big resort person. What I want to do, if I could do it for a month, I would rent a little room that had some air blowing through it off the sea, mm -hmm. and. I would do the simplest days, kind of like Ron Higgs was talking about. I would make sure that I was abusing my liver in the afternoons on the beach because, you know, there's really nothing like sitting on the beach with absolutely nothing to do and listening to this, the beach, the surf just roll in. And if you feel like it, walk into the water a little bit and, you know, play in the waves, come back to your bucket of beer and have a few more and and then take an afternoon siesta that would that would be me i could do that from easily for a month and no kids that's for sure so all right well good. Did, did we get ryan 
Oh yeah, I yeah. I, I, I already, I already, I already mentioned that. I'm, with, uh, I'm with the boss. He's yeah. going Santorini, man. He's going to Santorini. Yeah. That's right, Santorini. I let the boss control the decisions. Yeah. Or the real boss, yeah. I should say. Exactly. Exactly. That's. Yeah. I can only say what I can because I know she would agree with what I said. But <laughs> oh, Mark Brown's here. He was. He raised his hand. Mark, Let's get Mark up here real quick. Oh. All right. I'm uh, trying. <laughs> My screen just locked up. Can you do it? What's that? Uh, it looks like he. Let's see. I mean, I'll get down to find Mark here. Oh. Okay, I'll get him up. Yeah. It'd be interesting to ask my, my wife that question. Hi, yeah, I see. Mark, so, so where would you go for a month if you if money was no object? And what would you be doing? Yeah, sorry I'm late. I have a conflicting meeting on Thursday. So I would I've been briefly to both Patagonia and Iceland and I would go back because they're I, I love the outdoors. I love active holidays. I don't like lounging around on holidays. Yeah, I will, read a, I will read a book or two, but and they're both just living, breathing geology lessons. They're just so interesting and so many different kinds of things to do. And I would go. I would go with my wife and my adult children because we, yeah. we've actually been looking to do a Chile trip, but uh, obviously we're not doing it now with what's going on. Yeah. That's awesome, I, you know. And and one of the places that I do want to get to yet is Ecuador to ride motorcycles. And uh, it is it is supposed to be the paradise because you can go from the ocean to the to the high high mountain and deserts uh, in literally a couple hundred miles. So yeah, yeah Patagonia would be incredible. And Iceland is another one that I, you don't think about, but you look at the you know some of the explorers that you see out there now on a discovery or whatever it's that's an incredible place awesome. but, uh, yeah. oh, what sorry got to turn that off thought i had it off but <laughs> very cool choices thanks yeah that's right. <laughs> i was i that was, was trying to give a, call, a quick call there is like hey answer your phone yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah is this a good time <laughs> thanks <Bob. laughs> yeah Awesome. Well, now we don't, I know we don't have an appointment, but can I have five the minutes? Thing that I thought that like, I mean, if he would have answered the phone, like, I mean, that means that he has time. That's the way yeah. I look at it. Like, I mean, yeah. you know, if you have time to answer the phone, we might as well have a conversation. I got on the horn here. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing that's cool about this, this and these questions is, is, you get to know a little bit more about everyone as we do this. It's not the, the, and, and why we do it is to get away from the standard. Um, you know, this is what I do to, to really get to know people. But I, I think it's just awesome because when you think about the, the variety of answers we got to this question, I mean, I would have never thought of like the last one, Patagonia, Iceland, the Great Wall, uh, Thailand. Uh, and and as Troy said, just not just, but driving North America in the United States. It's cool. Yeah, it's, um, but most 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 of those yeah. come down to beach or yeah. you know like mountain yeah. nature. You know what I mean? Like that's that's what it comes yeah. down to for most of us. Yeah. So most of us are doing something outside, is what I'm saying. Well, that, it's interesting no, that I want to go. I'm yeah. go look at. That. Yeah. I want to go look at the interesting architecture in New York City or mm -hmm. something like that. There's it's, it's um it's, it's interesting though because of our group, you know, in itself. It, it, a lot of people here have been to a lot of places and done a lot of cool things, and it's. It's kind of nice to hear, uh, you know, where you go back. But I, I was, it, you know, it was, what I found was interesting was a lot of people want to go back to places they've already been, you know, and, uh, you know, found a spot they like. And, you know, uh, yeah. you know yeah. that, that's very interesting. Nobody said I want to spend a month in Las <laughs> that, Vegas on this trip. I'm surprised. <laughs> oh, sure. Look. If money was no object, I'm telling you, more than any place in the world, you could probably have a blast in Vegas for a month. If if they were paying yeah. to gamble and go to all the shows and eat all the food. Yeah. Well, you, you I'm surprised the river said right. Michael Connor yeah. dead on the Well, Ryan, let's get, let's get but, talking uh, about, you know, using the phone in 2020. So, um, yeah. It's yeah. great Happy to have time. you here today and, and uh, to learn a little bit more about this. So, what yeah. What are you seeing? I know you got a got a slide slide deck you're gonna pull up here, but uh, 
where do you want to start? Just lead us in. Well, ultimately, I can I can start with that, or we can just really start jumping the conversation, or with a slide deck, I should say. But ultimately, in 2020, it's as everything's kind of changing. We obviously been inundated with technological platforms to use for community or conversation and engagement. But I think uh, something that we've seen uh, happen over the years is just the way that we were intended to use the phone. And that was for human to human conversation. And that's what I want to try to bring back into 2020. But I don't want to lose sight of the fact that, or sorry, going into 2021, um, I don't want to lose sight of the fact that it can't be a standalone uh, outreach strategy or a communication strategy. It's got to come together as one. You got to you got to hit several key points. But I just want to help others become more efficient. I guess confident is the proper word, but it's about efficiency and just having those conversations and just kind of overcoming some of those fears that a lot of people have, thinking that the phone is one of the worst types of tools or the worst ways to reach out to somebody when a lot of people are happy to have those conversations. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's yeah. go ahead and, and uh, let's let's see your slide deck here. We'll talk about that a little sure. bit and ask some questions. Sure. Sorry, I'm just going to share my screen. My screen here. All right. Uh, sorry, wrong one. I guess find my screen here. There we go. All right, guys. So I just got to roll up here. I apologize. So I just want to say. And for anybody, anybody watching, if you hit the little yeah, arrows yeah, you can hit on the right-hand side it. of his screen, it'll blow it awesome. up and make it full screen. So I just, again, I want to start with a welcome message. I want to thank Damon, Andrew, Ira for inviting me to this roundtable to talk on this topic. Um, a lot of you aren't too familiar with me. I've had some conversations with a few others, but again, happy to, happy to talk with you about uh, cold calling in 2020 and how I think it should become a vital part. First and foremost, you're probably going to you want to learn a little bit about who the hell uh, I am. So I didn't hear too many others on here, but I am I think it seems like I might be the only Canadian on the line. And I'm actually quite disappointed that nobody wanted to come up to Canada for their getaway trip if they had all the money in the world. It, uh, was uh, I'm hurt. I'm a little bit hurt. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have. And <laughs> You've heard of this thing called snow, right, Ryan? But uh, <laughs> Again, I've I've been in sales for uh, probably most of my adult life. I'm 38 now. I started when I was about 23, um, and just been grinding it out ever since. Uh, there's lots of industries that I've called into. Um, as you can see, I've called for telecommunications, for logistics, for digital media, for software, for e-learning, for co-living, and more industries. I've called into is education, high finance, venture capital, small, all level or all types of business, SMB, enterprise, construction, and on and on. And when it comes to the cold calling part of it, um, or just the calling outreach part, I should say, it's just any service that revolves around the phone. It's service calls, it's lead verification calls, it's appointment setting and full sales cycle calls, whatever, 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 Whatever you need to clone for, I'm happy to take that on. But some of the individual highlights now, this doesn't date back 13 years. This is when I started my business back at the end of October 2018. I probably made approximately 26,000 outbound cold calls. And that does not include anything from an inbound or follow up perspective. At the peak of Ericsson, where of Ericsson Consultants, which is the name of my business, I was able to manage four different calling campaigns simultaneous. So that, that was varying probably of the services that I provided. And this year in 2021 with Ericsson, I'm on track to hit about 1.2 million in revenue. Um, but to kind of get going backwards, I wasn't always that confident on the phone. In fact, um, I truly just was terrible at it. I had a major fear like a lot of people do. I just found myself being a procrastinator uh, when it came to co cold calling. And I'll, I hear this a lot, like I'm using the gorilla analogy here, but um, the phone just looked like a 10,000 pound gorilla when you looked at it. I was ready just to tear my arms off when I, anytime I was gonna get close to it. So I can remember like it was yesterday, um, I was working for a telecommunications company in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. 
And I remember we had a, I guess you would call it a training, uh, a week training session where we went through var varying parts of the sales process. And at this point, I wasn't familiar with using the phone. And I remember in the middle of class, we had to do a cold call scenario. And this wasn't on the phone. This wasn't in private. This was just there was 30 to 40 other students there. And you had to call with the instructor. And I was absolutely terrified when that was happening. So this was back when I was 25, so about 13 years ago. And I just from there, that really set the tone for me understanding how important a phone can be. But I really had to push myself to get out of that comfort zone. Um, and it just progressed naturally from there with the same telecommunications company. We always would have every Tuesday, Thursday, we'd have cold calling sessions and we just practiced and practiced. And like anything else, the more you practice, the more confident you get with it. And as I started to evaluate myself and what I wanted to do to become more confident on the phone, I just found that if you can pick up the phone to generate new opportunities without having to wait for inbound leads to come in, you could have a sales career for life. I've never been part of a a major deal process or any types of deal really that the phone wasn't an early part or an early part of the process in that deal in or in that sales cycle um i've never heard of any business owner ever say we need to cut the cold calling budget you hear logistics you hear marketing you hear we've got to cut people but the cold calling budget always seems to be the tried and tested and true type of uh platform that always sticks around and you can always use it and if a lot of people have the fear of it why don't i just become at least competent at it so why did i start Erickson consultants group and that's what i've been that's what i started at the end of 18. i really wanted to change the narrative around cold calling to help businesses and help people become more proficient on the phone and so i really want to focus on the term introductory calling um, now, I don't want to sit here and say that introductory calling is just easy. It's because it's not, or else all of us, nobody be on this call, nobody listen. We'd all be doing it. We'd all be having those conversations. The phone would be a prominent part of any outreach strategy. So um, my goal here is just to give you some insight as to how we can make it a little bit easier together. So you too can start using the phone as it was first manufactured to be, and that's for real human to human conversation. Yeah. And when you're when you're about sorry, Damon, was somebody gonna say something there? No, 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 I was just listening. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, sorry. Um and just think of your first call as an introduction. It's all just part of the sales cycle. It's like anything else you do with any other outreach process that you have. Um today your potential partnerships, clients, and customers are informed and sophisticated buyers. So all we're trying to do is not have a hard sell and just have a real human to human conversation. Put them in the best position to understand your product, service, product or service and educate them. But we have to, but we obviously have to tackle the hardest parts here. And that's the fear, that very first call and not giving up on the process. So as an experienced caller who, well, at least I pride myself on being an experienced caller, I can just put your mind at ease that it's not worth overthinking the process. The chance you'll be told off on the very first call is, is about 99% of the time bullshit. It just never happens. Like, I mean, you might get the not interested and hung up, hop on, hung up on at the very at the very worst, but, and just think, and likelihood of reaching your key decision maker is very low on the very first call. So how can we get started? First off, if you do not get nervous, you're not a human being. Like, I mean, I still get nervous for calls. Uh, if it's a very, if it's a certain demographic or a certain industry that I haven't called into, it's about that feeling out process. It's about that, in, that engagement. It's about finding, navigating your way through the process and just continuing to pursue a way that you can get to the person with, with a real conversation without coming across as too salesy, I guess is the right term. So, and, one of the things that I always do is like I always explain to people when they're when they ask me about cold calling is just you got to find your get in the zone moment. Uh, for a lot of times, I'll wear a hat when I call. I don't know why; it's just a comfort thing. Um, 
it's a lot of people might ask me, can we do a video right now? And obviously me being a bald person, I don't really have the problem having messy hair or anything like that. So I can take it off do that in any capacity. So, and I think a lot of other bald people on the call here can kind of relate uh, as I saw Ira flip up, flip his hat off on and off a few times there. So he knows what it's all about. Um, I, and for another thing there, I like, I like to have gum in my mouth when I call, I don't know why it's just something that I do. It's, not the tube, but just old, and I can't really explain it. A, a lot of people will tell you that a quiet place is the best place to eliminate distractions. I disagree. I just believe that a supportive environment is the best location, whether that is in privacy or in a busy office. Just be around people who really understand how hard uh, introductory calling is, because this is something that isn't easy. Um, obviously, all the time you'll want to have a paper, a pen, and you'll want to have LinkedIn open. And obviously that's for notes and LinkedIn, just know a little bit about your, who you're calling. And I always, I've always found that one of the worst parts for me in when I was first getting started was that moment when you're that transitionary period between um, the tr when they're getting you to the person you want to talk to, we get so worked up. So I always found that I would have something funny or I started to add something funny onto YouTube or on my phone that I would start actually watching. And just until that time, because I know who I'm calling, I know why I'm calling them. And if I can put a smile on my face, that's what they want to hear, hear on the other end of the line. So, and one of my big thoughts or big ideas is don't ever, do not focus on the total number of calls, but on each conversation that this could be the best opportunity that you've been searching for, for what, whatever you may be doing. So a few ideas on how to prepare mentally. Get comfortable with no. Think of it. Think of no as not right now. Always set a goal to keep the progression moving forward. Um, I always look to achieve something on the call, whether it's an email or a follow-up call, just so I know that we're always moving our conversation to the next level. Know your customer, and I mean more than just their business. Just you got to know that's the best time to reach them as well. And every industry is different. And be more than comfortable with learning. And that's obviously the key term that that uh, aligns with is failure. I fail 80% of the time. Every day, 80% of my calls go to voicemail or they do not get answered. And that's obviously being very generous on my part. Success to me when it comes to cold calling is actually reading or reaching that key decision maker. And most importantly, just talk how you talk. The um, That's the most important factor when it comes to cold calling. Don't uh, try to sound different than you normally do I, I i truly believe people can sniff that out right away and one of the biggest culprits for us not finding success with intro calling outreach is we just give up too soon now i know a lot of you have probably seen this graphic before and i know it's changed uh, a lot over the years but i think this has been circled around for so long that it just makes sense so if you want to take down some of these numbers or just let that sink in for a minute that a lot of people give up way too soon when a lot of the sales or conversation that you're having are made from the fifth to the 12th contact. Yeah. Yeah. So, and for me personally, this is a, a sample cold outreach strategy that I use. So this is when we're, when we're doing cold outreach, it's not, obviously it's not something that somebody, it's something that somebody's not expecting. So if you don't get a hold of them, you don't want to start calling every day. And so with Erickson, what we do is we're trying to eliminate the call center philosophy, but create like a consist consistent strategy. And to me, the first introductory call is really the only cold call that you'll have. The one that where they don't know, where they don't understand. But to give you an idea, of, let's say I called somebody on Monday. I would then send them an e email on Tuesday if I haven't heard back from them just to follow up to my call. And then the following week, I'd call them on the Tuesday at a certain time. And then I would send a follow-up email. And then the end of that second week, I'd give them a direct social outreach. So a LinkedIn, something of that nature. If I don't get a connection, then the following week, I'll move it to Wednesday and see if I have better success of getting them there. And it just ultimately flows in that capacity for me. So it's not being so overbearing where a lot of times uh, telemarketers will call you multiple times a day, or they'll call you multiple times per week. You're trying to educate, not come across as too salesy. And I believe this is an important part of the process. But 
as I, as I mentioned at the very beginning, I believe sales and marketing should truly work together as one. Intro calling should be a complete or should be a part of the complete outbound engagement strategy, not standalone. It can't be expected to change the success of your business. I believe marketing and sales should work together. Too often I hear that marketing doesn't work with sales. Sales doesn't work with marketing. I've always thought that if they work together, some great things can be achieved. So it's about consistency. It's about engagement. And it's about that human to human conversation. A consistent, a consistent strategy leads to better relationships in, or better relationship opportunities in my opinion. And a thought that I've always ran with is as salespeople, we should be, we should have the cap, the capacity to be able to source and contact our own leads. And I've always thought if you can't do that, are you truly like a complete salesperson? And I look at it if I if I'm starting a new business or I'm working with a new business, I have about 90 days to prove myself and when the marketing initiatives really kick off, because obviously we know in this day and age, marketing can take about 90 days, give or take, to really show some concrete data of what you're going to achieve. And so this is just a sample introductory call script that's worked very well for me in the logistics, telecommunications, and digital media space. Then, thanks for calling XYZ Company. This is my name, or I'll say Susie. How can I help you or director call me? I say, I always repeat your name. This is Ryan Erickson from Erickson Consultants Group. I always want to make sure that I'm very confident in stating my name. And can you point me in the direction of the person who has the unfortunate task emphasize empathizing with the situation of working with and managing telecommunication services at XYZ. And I always shorten the name at the end just because I don't want to sound too robotic. Then I, I usually get a laugh at first when they hear this introductory statement and they, they usually put me through depending on the mood. Some, it doesn't always happen, but when they do put me through, I usually get some laughter. And I say, I always thank the person after for going, cause you never know when I'm going to have to contact that person again. And I just want them to remember me and the point of contact, uh, hello, or this is Nick, this is Dave. Hey Dave, this is Ryan Erickson calling from Erickson consultants group. Very confident. I understand you are the key person and I always want to validate their key decision maker status that has to sacrifice their time to deal with telecommunications companies all the time at XYZ. Empathize, understand how valuable their time is. So that's just my short presentation. And that's all right. It's just something something I want to put together. So I'm gonna take this down and cancel the yeah. share. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome, Ryan. Well, yeah. that, you know what what I think is is um, interesting to me here is that we have uh, you know integrating the call uh, calling into the overall process is really a part of this that I, I think that is interesting to me because so many people get um, started to look at things like okay we're going to do email outreach or we're going to do social media outreach or we're going to do one and and really integrating the overall like you're talking about there is 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 pretty interesting um yeah it, it has to increase the uh effectiveness of your overall campaigns is that what you yeah. see well i just believe it's got to become a vital component to any outreach campaign i mean as anything else we put so much emphasis on digital marketing on email campaigns but at some point i've just tried to educate those who ask the question is why do i need to use the phone and i always say why don't you want to use the phone because at some point there's going to be an opportunity throughout the process that you're going to have to reach them by phone so become comfortable with it and once you become comfortable with it then you can start adapting to utilizing uh cold outreach or introductory outreach is the better term and it's just about eliminating that thought process that introductory calling is really just all that bad. Yeah. It's just it's a it's just a great part of the process. It's all part of any outreach and anybody who utilizes it, I think will see some great advancements with whatever campaign they're doing. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Well, guys, do you have any other uh uh comments here? I'd like to uh see Ira, Andrew, what are you what are your guys' thoughts on this? 
Ryan, maybe just give us some, just give us a quickie, you know, give us one that's been real interesting for you that, that worked on your, on your calls. One of them, give us, give us a war story. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, uh, a war story or, I mean, I wish I, I wish I really had something that was like a horror story that, or a war story that wasn't, um, it was just more of the consistent. Like, I mean, there's several notes that I've jotted down. There's several times where I said that one graphic that I showed was five to 12, but I can say that it probably, I've hit, wor- hit upwards of 20 plus calls where it's actually, I finally got a hold of the person. That's multiple times going through the gatekeeper, um, multiple times, actually I shouldn't say gatekeeper, I should say, uh the controller of the business because the person who answers the phone really controls the business right so ultimately it's just multiple attempts and being consistent with the strategy and making sure that we keep pushing because again just that graphic uh explains it so much is that we give up way too soon and you just never know and i mean there was one i had a telecommunications one that just uh happened for me the other day for one of my clients and they had once the person who usually wouldn't let me through and i probably i probably tempted every week for the plat for the past three months so that would give us about 12 calls on a 13 call the one who usually didn't let me through somebody else answered i got through right away and booked the meeting for the client so you just never know it could be somebody answering the phone who's different someone could be having a bad day so it just varies on any given moment but ultimately it comes down to to how you feel about feel about calling on the phone. I mean, it's all a mental game as well, just like anything else. So yeah. I'll, give you, I'll give you a tip. This will help you, Ryan. Yeah, absolutely. If I, I talk to multiple people, or I'm sorry, the same person multiple times, and they're always a jerk to me. Yeah. It's a funny icebreaker, but <laughs> just ask them, so when do you go on vacation? <laughs> on, on the calendar. They, they, they won't appreciate it, but you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you, you know, I used to do this in San Francisco a lot, and it's kind of mm-hmm. the same idea. So, yeah, if you're cold calling a company at 10 30, 1 30, 3 30, you know what I mean? Normal yeah. hours, and you get a gatekeeper that's just like good night, Fort Knox. You're not getting yeah. through because they're paid to reject you. Yeah. That's their whole job is don't let anybody in this place. Yeah. Yeah. You go in yeah. at lunchtime or at 4 59. Because I'm telling you, at that point, the employee by the hour, the normal one, is not sitting there. It's somebody else. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's either the owner yeah. at 459, or usually the, the fill-in receptionist is a heck of a lot nicer than yeah. Yeah. Like you the, said. Primary, the primary beekeeper. So Yeah, it yeah. is good. And and the uh, the other thing is, too, that I, that I think that all of us do is that is that repetitive nature of it is like it takes 10 12 15 times of trying to get a hold of people to do this it's it's really it's it's really does it's a long game in other words yeah and and as you said i've I've worked with people before that think well you got to keep calling keep calling keep calling but i personally like that about a week cadence you know that give them six seven eight days sometimes ten you know what's happening because um people in business are, are people are busy and that's just what what you run into and if you if you respect that cadence a bit more rather than every day um yeah i think it i think it gives you a better shot at it i'll tell you i think i, I think I'll, sorry, sorry i already just jumped in on that note i think a lot of it is too is that we've been so um used to uh, telemarketers calling you at home Mm-hmm. Yeah. and calling you at when you're like when you're not work we're talking like i should have emphasized this that i'm talking specifically to business to business yeah um and as a as a person who enjoys being on the phone and talk on the phone i will never call b2c that's just not who i am i don't roll that way because i don't yeah. i don't like calling people at home or getting calls at home so how can i expect to call people at home yeah it just yeah. uh doesn't feel right so i think that's why cold calling just kind of gets a bad rap yeah yeah. Well, Ira, you were going to say something there too. Yeah, I got a couple of tips for you guys. If you're doing this yourself, because I've cold called a lot in my career, and um, a couple tips. If you send an email before in advance and say, I'm going to call you on the phone, then when the receptionist says, Are they expecting your call? You could say, Yes, they are. Whether they read the email or not, they should have. 
So they, they're expecting your call now. You're not lying, right? I don't like to lie. So then the other thing is I learned, and this is kind of just more of an IRA personality thing, but it works. I speak in first names. I speak in acronyms like I'm familiar, right? So if I'm calling for Ryan Erickson, I'm not saying, hello, I would like to talk to your director of cold calling, Eric Ryan Erickson, please. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this is Ira yeah. Bowman from Bowman Digital Media. I don't say any of that. I say, hey, good morning or good afternoon. Can I speak with Ryan? And usually the next thing out of their mouth is Ryan who? And then you can say the last name, right? That's question number one. Then they're going to say, well, okay, can I tell him who's calling? And I say, yes, this is Ira. And they go, Ira who? That's question number two. And not to give them my last name. And then they say, well, and where are you from? And I go, BDM or EYW, right? And then that's question number three. Usually they start to get a little bit frustrated with me because they're really trying to screen me out, but they can't tell. Is this personal or not? They can't tell. You know what I mean? But I'm speaking so familiar. So a lot of times it's three is the magic. They'll ask you up to three questions usually, and then they'll put you through. Now, they might put you straight to voicemail, but they're not going to tell you to piss off. So that's just a way to kind of – it's the they're trying to block you out, and you're trying to get in. So yeah. you have to learn to play the game a little bit. And so you don't give anything more than you have to because the lady that's talking to you is not the controller of the company officially in reality they are but you know what i mean in title they're not they're not the official decision maker yeah, so yeah. you know what i mean you don't have to you don't have to you know give them your social security number and all your credit references before they let yeah. you through yeah. you just have to learn how to play it so anyways that i found that would help sometimes they're not going to let you through no matter what but some of these things will help you get through yeah well awesome ira and andrew we're getting close uh alon alon raised his hand we're going to let him up here and then we're going to shut things down Obviously, there's a lot of theories and philosophies and cold calling. I just want to make sure everybody understand or understand who am I to say people to understand. But it's not just phone call anymore, right? It's every channel of communication. It's LinkedIn, it's text, whatever. But one thing I will say, and Ryan, I sent you a, a note on LinkedIn, so I'd love to connect offline. Sure. But one thing I would say is you all just gave me a, a topic for my next blog, which is today in today's world, right now during the pandemic, it's not so cold anymore out there for cold calling. Yeah. 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 So thank you for that. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome, Alon. Cool. Thanks a lot. Well, Andrew, take us home, dude. Top of the hour. Yep. Uh, hey, thanks, guys, Ryan. That was terrific. Pleasure. Yeah, I know. I it. You know, cold calling is, um, uh, you know, and, and, and now, too, I think it's kind of a counterintuitive, but people aren't expecting the calls. Uh, especially a personal call when you try to get personal like this. And that's, that's what I'm getting from this is uh, too. And the way we started this meeting today too, let's talk a little bit about what you do, you know, something personal like that. Uh, it, it's great to have Alon here because his main thing is, is establishing that personal connection. Yeah. That's how you're successful. So calling, emailing, it doesn't matter. However you're reaching out, you know, that's the important part. Yeah. But great stuff. Um, yeah. Um, anyways, we're going to go back to the uh, tables. Yep. Um, let's stick around. Yeah. Um, get some more with Ryan about calling, and and uh, we'll we'll hang out for a little bit, do some networking. Yeah. Uh, as long as we want to do it, and yeah. All right. Anything else, guys? Thanks a lot, guys. We're going back to the tables. I'm going to stop the the LinkedIn live here as well. So, um, here we go.